We're having a swing and vintage Halloween party, and you're invited. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. I've teamed up with these two lovely talented ladies, Dawn of Shappy Meets Bling and Tracy of Ephemoir, to create a swinging vintage Halloween party using Tracy's fabulous digital designs. Tracy is the artist and owner of the Etsy shop Ephemoir, a wonderland of digital downloads. She also has an extensive array of designs available at the Silhouette Design Store. There's truly something for everyone here. I took one look at her sites and fell in love. So, there will be links in the description box for both of Tracy's shops. And Tracy's also offering a discount for you guys. You'll find that link in the description box as well. And I think I'm going to pin them in the comments, you know, for easy access. Today, I'm using downloads from her Etsy shop. So you know what? Let's get into it. Every party goer needs a costume, right? So we're making a classic retro black cat costume in a box. You know, the ones with the plastic mask that you couldn't see out of or breathe out of. So, but ours is going to be mini. It's a mini paper homage to those box costumes. I'll be mixing and matching from a couple different downloads to create these. I have here an eight and a half inch black cardstock square that I scored and I will fold at one and three quarter inches on all four sides. This is going to be the bottom of our costume box. I'll cut slits at the cross mark of the fold, just up to the fold. This will give us the flap that we need to construct the box. So see, I'll bend these together so you can get an idea of what I mean. I'm using 3-in-1 glue to attach the corner flaps, and I'm also going to tape them on the inside of the box, you know, for extra support. This polka dot paper is for the inside bottom of the box. This is from the Monster Mesh Matchbox download. I sized it in Photoshop to fit my needs. And you know, I'm going to list all of the downloads that I used today in the supply list. So once again, I'm using my 3-in-1 glue to adhere it to the bottom of the box. And I'm just going to make sure that it's really well stuck down there. I printed the box top onto white cardstock using a design from the Wicked Halloween papers, and I used a glue stick to add black cardstock to the back for reinforcement. This piece measures 8 inches square, and the square marks are at a half inch and at one and a half inch. I also drew a three and a half inch square in the center. We'll cut this out for the box window. But first, let's make our folds. So I'm going to start with the half inch fold, and then I'll do the one and a half inch fold on all four sides. To cut out the window, I lined my ruler to the edge, and I'm using my cutting pen. Gravy actually sent this to me in my subscription box. I love it. It's so easy to work with. Super sharp, excellent tool. On the back here, I marked off the pieces that will be cut away to make the shape. I did this because I would definitely have cut away something I needed otherwise. So I am cutting right on the fold. You can see once I get this cut out here that it makes like a little L shape on the corner there. And now we're going to make little slits just like we did on the bottom box. And again, I'm just cutting right on the fold. All four corners will be cut exactly the same. So you can see this is how the flaps will work, just like they did on the bottom box. I'll glue the flaps and tape them just like I did on the bottom. Thank you. 
Once all four sides have been glued together, then I'll fold down the top fold and glue it into place, and I'll also add tape to that as well. I didn't do this, but you certainly could glue a piece of cellophane over the window for a truly authentic, you know, costume box. You know how they had cheap cellophane over top. Ah, good times. Let's add some glitter. Okay, so I've already added some orange glitter polka dots, but now I'm going to add some black glitter polka dots too. And I'm just using Mod Podge and the end of a dale to make my dots. Then I'll sprinkle it with glitter. I gotta say, I love me some glitter, especially for Halloween. There's just, I don't know, something about it, even though it is a nightmare to clean up. I can't do without it. Ooh, so sparkly. I'm going to glitter up all of the elements that will decorate the box. I'm going to start with the cat because he's going to be our mask. This piece here is not from the downloads. This is just a rectangle that I made in Photoshop and I added my own text that says masquerade costume. This Halloween, however, is from one of the downloads, and I'm just gonna add a wee bit of glitter to this. This is definitely a personal preference thing. So, you know, if you're going to remake this or do your own version, just do whatever pleases you. This oval piece is from the Creepy Circus download, which is a very cool collection of ephemera, and I'm just gonna glue it right here in the center of the box. I'll glue this wee cube in the middle of the oval with hot glue. This is going to add dimension to our cat mask, which will glue to the cube. Okay, let's decorate the lid. I added some glitter dots to the corner of the box because, you know, I needed a little jazzing up, you know what I'm saying? So, you can see that there, right? Now, let's add all of our elements, and I'm going to use both 3-in-1 glue and hot glue to attach all of our elements. We're going to stick the Halloween up here in the corner. Of course we are. Going to need some bats. And let's add a skull. And of course, a jack-o'-lantern. And that's it. We're finished. Donezo. What do you think? I love it. We have our costume for our party, and now we need an invitation. So here's everything that I'll be using. I laid it all out to see what's what. Okay, now she, she's from the Retro Brew Folio set. Actually, all of these are. I thought it was cool because it has a comic book aesthetic to it, to the illustrations. So I sized them in Photoshop, printed them on cardstock, and cut them out. The backing sheet is the same download pattern I used for the box. I uploaded it to Photoshop. I added all of my text. Then I printed it on regular copy paper. I have an inkjet printer, so I did spray it with clear matte sealer so the ink wouldn't run. I apply a coat of Mod Podge to a 5x6 inch wood plaque that I paint it white. And I'm laying the backing sheet on right on top, and I'm going to smooth it out. I'm not adding a top coat of Mod Podge. Usually I would, but I wanted this to maintain the paper look of an invitation. I apologize for all the background noise. It is a noisy night. It's very nice outside and the wind is open, so we're getting some street noise. I ink up the edges using a cosmetic sponge, first with orange ink, then I hit it with black ink. Ah yes, there's the obligatory car alarm going off. Cue dog bark. <laughs> Life in the city. The vampires will be glued flat to the invitation with 3-in-1 glue. The hat, ghost, and candy corn, they're going to get a 3D effect. Here's a tip I got from Indiana Jones. I didn't have anything small enough to mount these two, so I remembered Annie cutting pieces from a glue stick to use as a riser. So, that's what I did. Perfect. Thanks, Annie. I'll hot glue down the pieces of glue stick, 
then glue my characters to them for that dimensional look. I added a wee bat at the bottom and some jack-o'-lanterns at the top to finish it off. Our party needs a chaperone, so we contacted Union of Witches, Loyal Order of the Cauldron. They sent over Myrtle Oglethorpe. She's the mistress of sorcery and magic. Once again, starting with a 5x6 wood plaque, and I'll ink up the one edge with black and rusty hinge, just like a burnt orange color. It's a Tim Holtz. I'm going to use this book page as my backer sheet. It's not quite big enough, so that's why I I ink the one side of the plaque. Let's get a coat of Mod Podge on the plaque and we'll apply the paper. We'll make sure it's well stuck and give it a top coat. While that dries, let's add some age and interest to old Myrtle Junior card. I'm going to grunge it up a bit using Tim Holtz's Vintage Photograph ink and then some black. When you get to the party, Murda will give you tickets for all the contests. So we're going to grunge them up a wee bit too. These tickets are also from the Retro Brew Collection, coming in again with the Vintage Photograph and black. And I'm going to ink up all of my paper elements the same way. Now that the Mod Podge is dry on our paper, we're going to use the burn method to get those edges off and give them some interest. I do have a cup of water handy just in case I'm going to light the edges of the paper. Only the paper that isn't covered in Mod Podge will catch fire and burn away. Needless to say, you always want to be very careful when using the burn method, but I've never had an issue. I'm tamping the edges with a damp paper tail just to make sure that all is well and it also knocks away any of the burnt paper and it gives it, you know, this cool effect to the edge, I think, anyway. Okay, so I'm coming in with some rusty hinge ink and, you know, we'll do the vintage photograph and the black. Let's start placing our ephemera. I'll start by placing the tickets. I'm going to Mod Podge them along the side here, and I have a smaller set. I'm going to put them here on the other side at a little bit of an angle. Let's get Myrtle, the keeper of the tickets on here now. Oops, almost forgot I wanted this Halloween to go underneath, so I'm just going to keep the bottom part of her union card up until I can get that Halloween laid down. We have a poison label, also from the Retro Brew Collection. It's a reminder not to mess with Myrtle. We'll add her title of Mistress of Sorcery and Magic. These I printed up on my own and I tore them out for that deckled edge. A wee bad. And this cool jack-o'-lantern on a stick. <laughs> it's a must-have. And we need a Ghostly 31, of course. To decorate her hat, I'm scrunching up a scrap of black tool that I'll wrap with a piece of pipe cleaner to make a doodad, you know, to put on her hat. And I'm going to add a rose, a dark rose, and some pit berries. I mean, it is a party after all. I also added a jewel and some buttons to add dimension. I had a blast making these. I hope you had fun watching. Be sure to head over to Tracy's Etsy shop, Ephemore, to check out all of her fabulous digital art. I snagged myself some sweet autumn and Christmas downloads too. She also has adorable silhouette designs in the Silhouette Design Store. You'll find links to both of Tracy's stores, her channel, as well as Dawn's channel in the description box, along with the discount code to Tracy's shop. You'll find a list of my supplies there as well. 
The party is just getting started. Wait until you see what Dawn of Shappy Meets Bling has in store for you. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.